white man, white woman, and Latino man handed Trump the presidency. So Latino men that voted for Trump, we gotta talk. If that man goes through with the promises that he's made, like mass deportations, like denaturalization, aggressive border policies, attacks on reproductive rights that could affect your mothers, sisters, and daughters, then I hope that you stand on business to support your family and the community that you claim in the same way that you stood on business to support this man. That's it, that's my commentary. Y'all keep saying that familia is a core value for you, so stand on it and show up. Imagine my surprise when I learned that it was Latinos that put this man into office. I was four years old when I was first asked to stand before an immigration official. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. I really appreciate you all for tuning in to watch this video. My good name is Judy. So it's just a week post election in the United States. I've seen several people reacting to it, be it black people, the people of color, the white people, all of them had different reactions. And uh, checking on the analytics, most of the Latinos voted for Donald Trump. And right now, they are collectively saying that they're going to face the consequences themselves. Now they are blam blaming themselves for voting for Donald Trump since uh, uh, very soon. Donald Trump said that on his tenor, he will make sure that he deport the undocumented illegal immigrants from the United States back to their country. So now Latinos are so much scared. They are blaming themselves for voting for Donald Trump because they're gonna face the consequences together. I had a compilation from TikTok and I'm gonna show you. White man, white woman, and Latino man handed Trump the presidency. So Latino men that voted for Trump, we gotta talk. If that man goes through with the promises that he's made, like mass deportations, like denaturalization, aggressive border policies, attacks on reproductive rights that could affect your mothers, sisters, and daughters, then I hope that you stand on business to support your family and the community that you claim in the same way that you stood on business to support this man. That's it, that's my commentary. Y'all keep saying that familia is a core value for you, so stand on it and show up. Imagine my surprise when I learned that it was Latinos that put this man into office. I was four years old when I was first asked to stand before an immigration official and explain why I deserved to go to the United States. I was four. I was nine when a border patrol agent woke me up by shouting in my face so close I could feel his breath pointing a flashlight in my face, asking me if I spoke English. I was 11 when SB 1070 first passed in Arizona, and I was terrified that I would be targeted or my loved ones would be targeted because we might look Hispanic. I was 13 when a shoddy immigration lawyer gave my family bad advice and permanently separated us. I was 15 when a boy from school was violently stalking and threatening me and I couldn't go to the police because I was undocumented. I never even told my parents, they still don't know, I just moved schools. I was 18 when I decided I wanted to become an immigration attorney so that no family would ever have to go through something like this ever again. And for the last eight years, I've worked in immigration, advocating for immigrant rights and fair and reasonable immigration law and policy. So imagine my surprise when I learned that it was Latinos that put this man into office. The community that I've been fighting for and the people that were supposed to be fighting alongside me would rather aspire to whiteness than to reform an organization that has been dehumanizing and villainizing and abusing our community for the last 30 years. I have no words today. I'm just rethinking my whole last life. I hope that you are doing okay and making some space for your mental health. Mañana será otro día y la lucha sigue. Because I've been thinking a lot about this and I know it's going to be controversial, but I'm actually rooting for Latinas and Latinos who voted for Trump. I really am. I really hope that they get everything that they voted for and I hope that they never forget who they voted for. So when they're waving goodbye to their undocumented partner because they got deported back, I want them to remember who they voted for. When their abuelita needs life-saving care, but there is no Medicaid because it's been slashed to the bone, I want them to remember who they voted for. When they watch their nieces and nephews struggle because birthright citizenship is gone and all of a sudden they're 
family isn't welcome, I want them to remember who they voted for. When they have a child with special needs, but there's no funding, no resources, no Department of Education, I want them to remember who they voted for. When all of a sudden their family's neighborhood is targeted with more policing instead of community support, I want them to remember who they voted for. When there's no money for your family, but a whole bunch for billionaires, I want them to remember who they voted for. When environmental protections vanish and the air is so disgustingly polluted that their kids develop asthma or something similar, I want them to remember who they voted for. When discrimination increases and they are harassed incessantly because they will never be white, I want them to remember who they voted for. Call me petty, but sometimes getting exactly what you voted for is the only way to understand it. I can't believe that the Latinos voted for Trump. I can. I can. I believe it 100%. Girl, y'all have to stop acting like it is just Cubans that are racist and conservative in the Latino community. Coming from a Colombian girl, look at the politics of Colombia. Yes, I know our president is like more left-leaning this time and very progressive. But girl, look at the politics and the history. Look at their stances on abortion. I know she's decriminalized. However, that just means that you can't go to jail if you got an abortion, okay? Or if you're a doctor that conducts an abortion. That does not fucking mean that it is socially accepted. Turn on Telemundo. You tell me how many people of color you see on Telemundo. You tell me how many brown and black people you see on that show. Tell me if they're casting. Turn on Caracol. Tell me how many people of color you see on there. Like, I don't want to hear it that we're this progressive community. We're not. So yeah, I 100% believe it. And for all of these freaking people who are Latinos that voted for Trump, I'm going to hold your hands when I say this. He doesn't like you. He never liked you. And he's never going to respect you. And if y'all weren't born here, he's going to try and find a way to get you deported. So congratulations for looking stupid. 60% of Latinos voted for Trump in this election. And to think that my vote was going towards protecting my people. The fact that I was absolutely horrified at the thought of Trump becoming president because of the effects that it will have on our people. I voted for those Latinos that don't have a voice in this country. For the Latinos that are the backbone of this country and don't receive shit. I voted for the Latinos that have been nothing but good people in this country, paying taxes and have no criminal records only to find out that it's our own people turning against us. I am truly disgusted. 60% of Latinos voted for Trump. 60, 60, con el plátano en la cara, con el nopal en la frente. At this point, disrespectfully, we deserve every single thing that's coming to us. Every single thing, because there is just no way. 60, mano. As a Latino, I've never been more embarrassed and more disappointed in the Latin community for even voting or thinking of voting for Trump. Voting against your own self-interest is is counterproductive. It's insane to me. Like, y'all don't make no sense. What's not clicking? And let's be very serious. Latinos voted for Trump because they want to be as close to whiteness as possible. It's because they are anti-black. It's because of the internalized racism. It's because of the pure out, not even internalized, it's for the, for the out, outward racism. That's really mainly what it was. And let's not forget the misogyny of it all. Let's not forget that because one thing a Latina woman is gonna do is gonna put her man, her son, her and any male figure in the Latin community up on a pedestal with ease, with ease. And that's exactly what the Latino men thrive on, the women, always putting them up on a pedestal and that's really the sad part about it because there is no reason why they should have been voting for trump at all at all i'm disappointed i'm disappointed today and and i'm just so disappointed a lot of people seem confused and surprised about how 60 percent of latino voters voted for donald trump after he's made countless racist and xenophobic remarks against not only latinos but also immigrants from other countries but after latinos we're not surprised at all Racism is alive and well in the Latino culture with things like mejora la raza, which means to better the race, which is like street eugenics. Calling your family members based on their skin tone like negro negrita as a loving term, but it's obviously derogatory because the anti-blackness is so prevalent. And the craziest part, if we were able to break down the Afro-Latino votes from the white and mixed Latinos, we'd probably see that Afro-Latinos inflated the hair support from Latinos. That's the reason I don't speak to most of my family anymore. They bullied me out of their lives for being darker than them, and I bet the ones in Texas voted for him. I'm so sorry. 
First of all, I just want to say I'm sorry, Carolina, that you had to experience colorism and racism at the hands of your own family members. In my video speaking about the Afro-Latina perspective on Latinos voted for Donald Trump, I spoke about how racism and colorism still affects our communities today and is embedded within our culture and language. In the comments, there were countless experiences of people telling me that they felt discriminated against by their own family members because they were darker skinned. We all know that Latin America has a colonial history, and therefore the language has been used in the past to hurt people, marginalize people, and make them feel differently based on the fact they're darker. And because Latin Americans have such a beautiful, diverse, and rich genetic mix, people's families can come out in so many different shades, and it's honestly beautiful. But you'll have people like Carolina and many other commenters who say that they were judged for being darker and they were seen as less than. And how were they bullied? Sometimes through language. I had a lot of commenters who said that, oh, well, I'm not even dark or we're white and we use those terms as endearment. You're not in touch. You don't know what's going on. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But I seriously want to hold space for those of us who have been affected by those terms. And my hope is that whether you're a Latino who is lighter skin, darker skin, who calls people by these terms or allows people to call you by those terms and take it as a term of endearment, that we can all really hold space and have a conversation about why we even do it in the first place. Oh, you can't just blame Latino voters. Like, yes, the fuck I can. And I say that with my immigrant ass passport, okay? Yes, you can blame the campaign. Yes, you can blame the party. But at the end of the day, there's this little thing called personal accountability. In 2016, I was a little bit more lenient because, okay, people just don't know. They don't understand the consequences. But we live through that presidency. What I'm hearing now, even from immigrants and documented immigrants, because yes, if you have TPS, if you have DACA, you're still undocumented under federal law. Oh, it wasn't that bad under Trump. Oh, Trump's not gonna do anything. Oh, he didn't do anything last time. Oh yes, he didn't, he tried. The only thing that stopped him was a full resistance movement that filed lawsuits for every single one of his executive orders. What really gets me is that a lot of people who have undocumented family or themselves are undocumented will ultimately need the help of other people who told y'all don't let this man back in office. Relying on people like myself who have been doing immigration advocacy for years, it generally makes me not wanna do this shit anymore. Like next year, a lot of us are gonna be helping people that couldn't even help themselves by voting for their best interest. You know where gas really gonna be cheap? In fucking Mexico, yeah it is. Girl, this is T and this is what the hell I have been saying. We are not united. We're not. I literally hate this mentality that we're united. We're not. You're going to tell me that Colombians and Venezuelans get along, that Puerto Ricans and Dominicans get along, that Ecuadorians and Peruvians get along. The only thing that unites us is colonization. That's literally the only thing because we also have different words for stuff. Pena for Colombians means embarrassment. For Puerto Ricans, pena means pain. Like, girl, our words aren't even the same. We don't even have the same accents or anything. Like, there is no unity. That's why we're in the freaking big white guy that we're in right now because girl, by denying one's whiteness, we let the white supremacists win because we are allowing them to determine what our race is. When I'm walking around in Colombia, I am treated as a white woman because girl, believe it or not, you know? But I don't know if we're ready for that conversation. Now the Latinos are facing it. They are really crying all over. Most of them have started facing racism and now they are blaming themselves for voting Donald Trump. Most of them are saying that they didn't know that it will be this way. They didn't know that uh, mass deportation was that serious until right now that people are talking about it. They are saying that some of them, their husbands, doesn't have documents, so the separation will be so bitter. Some of them are saying that they have stayed in the u.s for almost nine years so leaving u.s to another different country will be so painful for them because they don't know how they will start also others are commenting that their parents doesn't have documents and they have documents so they don't know how they will be separated from their family because that feeling of being separate from your family you know it is so painful now the cry is all over they didn't know and they didn't see this coming because if you check from the analytics most of the latinos voted for trump and uh, the blame is on their men they're cl complaining that most of their men wanted to vote for trump so that uh, they they can be considered as people or uh they they can get that sympathy which is not going to happen now 
they are also saying that there is no day they'll be like the white people they'll no longer be like them they'll be latinos and latinos alone no day their color will change to be white it's just getting interesting because mass deportation is kind of real so they are crying all over blaming their men blaming themselves for voting in the wrong person so guys what can you tell the latinos did they make a good decision or a bad decision should they stop complaining or they should continue with their complaints because even if they continue with their complaints we'll hear them absolutely no one the consequences will be served hot 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 each and every day so let me know your opinions in the comment section thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate until next time it's just a goodbye for now